Let's talk about the legal side of things and how it could be that such a thing as class and possibly race alters the sentence that you're given for the crime. Uh, Joseph Cotri Monson is a criminal lawyer and a director at Mary Monson Solicitors. Good afternoon to you, Joseph. Good afternoon, Tim. When you saw the judge's remarks, which, um, as I understand it, one of them was a prison sentence would have a severe impact on him. I just thought, yeah. Well, I'm a, What's well, that I'm got a, to do with it, I thought? Yeah, I'm a defence lawyer, of course, Tim, so I'm naturally going to be pro-defendant in this type of case, but isn't prison the point? Yeah. <laughs> isn't punishment the point in this type of situation? This was six years in English law, mm. any, any day of the week as a sentence. The, the, the wider interesting question, the one you're asking, is effectively, are your chances of going to prison greater yes. if you're black rather than white? Let's not beat around the bush. And well, uh, well, no, no, it's, it's two things, Joseph. It, it, are it greater if you're black rather than white, but also the class. If, you know, if you're from the equivalent of Eton, which this young man was, or, or Stanford University, Ox, Oxbridge, let's say. So it's class and race. Yeah, that's right. But let's be, let's be realistic about society. Uh, th now that legal aid has been decimated, the rich are much more likely to be able to afford to be well represented therefore get better results in court. That's probably what happened here. Of course, there's a degree of empathy with a probably middle-class white judge. Uh, he uh, is, and he went to the same university as the young man. Oh, well, there you go. So middle, middle well, that's not proof, is it? It's, it's a, that's mi for me, use one of your words, that's mitigation. Yeah, uh, quite, quite. Yeah. The word I've been known to use, Tim. <laughs> but the, the reality is that the fact that black people are more likely to get a rough ride in the courts... It's not because the courts particularly have a problem with race. It's because society has a problem with race and opportunity mm. that it refuses to acknowledge. And until you sort that out, black people w will, in more circumstances, be forced to use the legal aid system, which is a legal as, as a system, no matter what anybody says, is failing to provide proper justice. Okay. Look, I'm happy to come on to, to the racial element of this. But let's do the class one first and then, then move to that. In this country... Um, I mean, I, I think most of us looking from afar, and you, you're more of an expert than I am, but we, you know, we've seen the American system and we've seen what money can buy in the legal system. Uh, and we'll, that is to do with class here, because you've already brought up uh, the fact that we, the, the, the funding for legal aid has been cut. So, do you think, I mean, are there any studies to show that there is a difference between what people from wealthy backgrounds in this country are sentenced to for similar crimes to people from non-wealthy backgrounds? No, and it's crazy crazy feature that nobody, although people have asked the question, has sat down and done a proper mm. study on it. It's something I've thought about in the past. It's something that Mary Monson, my mother, when I was first getting trained as a lawyer, was telling me should be done. And uh, She's been in law over 30 years now. You know, the, the reality is that class, wealth, you know, they are, of course, related. But you only need to look at the way in which judges are recruited to see what's really going on here, Tim. Judges are white. They are middle or upper class. They're mostly former prosecutors. Of course, you know, Tim, that means they're drawn from the establishment end of the legal profession. Yeah. They're much more likely to have things in common with young, errant white men than young, errant black men. The and, of course, that... Yeah, but and these are, but these are also to supposed to be the creme de la creme of the brains of the legal world. I mean, you have put more context into that. And, and they're supposed to be above such things. Now, obviously, it make, that would make them superhuman. I mean, well, for example, you know, you can't prejudice a high court judge. So I, I could say, if I was stupid enough into a microphone, that person X was guilty before uh, the legal decision. But I wouldn't be able to hi prejudice a high court yeah, judge absolutely. because they're so clever compared uh, to juries who are fallible and risk <laughs> at risk of prejudice but yeah. we're always told that you know if if a judge makes a finding of fact it's gospel and all other judges that follow that decision in higher courts will say yes that person was there that judge was there and we're not going to go behind their finding of fact and there's a tremendous reluctance to regard judges as anything except infallible, right. which and to so anyone who's normal and common sense and knows the frailty of human beings, those must be absolute nonsense. But, of course, we go around as lawyers 
uh, doffing our hat to this emperor's new clothes of mm. judges' infallibility when the reality is they're just human beings and as at risk of prejudice as every, everybody else it's only by recognising it that it can be effectively right. dealt with the point so, at which they don't, it becomes a problem So on the class uh, they recognise people like themselves uh, in, in the dock and think, well, you know, comes from a good family, he's probably very embarrassed about all I this. I don't want to do judges a disservice. You know, the reality is this isn't something that happens overwhelmingly. I think it probably is a phenomenon. Right, and it's a case of we don't know how much, which would bring us back to your study. The right, reason we're let's... talking about this case, of course, is because it is, in the course of things, relatively unusual. Yeah. Usually this person would have got a lot of This was jaw-dropping, I thought. Absolutely, yeah. and that's why, rightly, we're discussing it. Okay, um, and what about, re what about race? Do you think it is, because there are studies in the United States which show uh, that if you're black, you're far more likely to go to prison. Do they ex do those ones exist? You have an unreconstructed police force, police forces, random... Un, un, d disorganized and disparate police forces throughout America that many of the population think are completely out of control. We've got a much more, and I say this through gritted teeth because I'm not the natural friend of the police in this country but <laughs> as, as a defense lawyer, but the reality is we do have a much more professional police force. Mo most of the new intake have been to university. You know, they're mm. analysts rather than thief takers. Uh, and the... Uh, you know, we've come a long way in this country. There was a time where if a young man uh, uh, was black and was caught with drugs, they'd go to prison. There's probably statistics that still suggest they're more likely to do it. Mm. But it's not as bad as it once was. Right. So when it comes to class, uh, you are persuaded. Um, but anyway, you seem to be persuaded, persuaded of, of both. Because, again, if you're talking about the pool from which the judges are drawn... Um, and who they recognise in front of them are usually from their class. Majority of Black Britain, and in fact various, I think, minority Britain, uh, are working class still to this day. Um, and things have changed, obviously, but it's still fair, I think. So, which... It, it, uh, can you make the argument that if you're Black and working class, the, the justice system in this country is tilted against you be well, because of the prejudice which they, the judges may not even know they have. Yeah, you, have a, you certainly have a disadvantage, you know, and it's the combination of the, the prejudice in court, uh, which is natural because you're not being sentenced by a natural peer, for the reasons we've talked about. Judge isn't somebody who has a great deal in common with you. But you know, also, the point at which legal aid is destroyed is the point at which I can't afford to do as many legal aid cases. So unless you can afford to pay me privately for my services and lawyers at my level, the reality is you're not going to get us. Uh, Joseph, why ha don't you um, get on with it and do your own... Um your own survey. You, 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 do the, you do the heavy lifting. I'm you do the, the next to, thousand cases. You're I'm busy. too busy trying to protect <laughs> the innocent. Who, who should be doing it then? Who, who should see if we the have the same... Responsibility is with government, but that would require government to look critically at itself. We all know government, especially on matters of justice, is historically very bad at that. Just look at all these inquiries we're having about miscarriages of justice, the Hillsborough inquiry. We're now going to have an inquiry into the miners' strike. How many years has that taken to... For, the, just, for the, the, the establishment to acknowledge something that the people have known for generations. Joseph, thanks for that context. Um, uh, you weren't as um, aggressive, perhaps, as uh, you might have been, but you, you clearly think there's a problem. Uh, I look forward to this um, survey that the government will do, and it's up to you and others to press the government to do it. Joseph Cotry-Monson, thank you very much for joining us.